In this video, we are going to discuss another looping construct in Java that is a for loop in Java. We know that this for loop can be applied for those cases, for those iterations where for number of times the iteration is going to take place is pre known to us. So, for loop is mainly used whether the number of iterations are pre known to us. So, when this number of iterations are pre known to us, then only we can go for the for loop execution. The basic syntax is like this. So, for then we are having this initialization code, Boolean expression which can return either true or false. So, they will be separated by semicolon, then semicolon, then update of the loop control variable. And then within curly braces, we will be writing the statements which are under the for loop and supposed to get executed when the condition is true. So, in the initialization phase, it initializes the loop variable. So, let us suppose the i is the loop variable. So, here I can write i is equal to 1 or i is equal to 10. So, that is the loop initialization phase. In the Boolean expression section, it checks whether the given condition is true or false. Finally, it updates the loop control variable here in this particular section. And these three statements are to be separated by two semicolons. So, each different section for the for loop like initialization, condition checking and update are separated by a semicolon. So, we can use this for loop for the infinite looping using this construct. Here, here you can find that only we have mentioned two semicolons that is no initialization code, there is no condition and there is no update code there. So, that is why we have put this within this first brackets, we have put this semicolon twice and this is forming an infinite loop. So, through this flowchart, let us explain more. So, control is coming from here, this is our init code or initialization code, then condition is there. This particular condition when it is true, then the code block will get executed consisting of single of or multiple statements. Then the increment or decrement may take place. So, update of the loop control variable will take place, but here we have mentioned increment. So, also I am mentioning increment here. Then control is coming back to the condition and when this condition is true, again this looping will take place, executing this code block once again, but if the condition is false, it will come out and the program will get terminated after executing the next unexecuted instructions. So, let us go for one practical demonstration for the better understanding on this for loop in our Java program. In this demonstration, we are discussing about the for loop in Java. So, int sum is equal to 0. So, the sum has got initialized with the value 0 of the type integer. And then for int a is equal to 0, semicolon a less than 10, semicolon a plus plus. That means here we are defining one variable and initial initializing it with 0. So, that is a loop control variable. Here the a is known as the loop control variable. So, at first the initialization, then semicolon, then you will be having one condition. Depending upon the condition, it will be decided whether the loop will get executed further or it will get terminated. And then semicolon and then we will be having increment or decrement factor of this a of this particular loop control variable. So, at first initialization, then semicolon, then condition, then semicolon, then increment or decrement of the loop control variable value. So, this is the basic syntax, the basic grammar of this for. So, now when this condition will be true, when this condition will be true, then this block will get executed. What we are doing here? Actually, we are printing one line and then we are going for sum is equal to sum plus a and outside of the loop sum has got initialized with the value 0. So, A can have maximum value as it is getting increased by 1 starting from 0. So, A can have maximum value that is 9 and 9 less than 10 the condition will be true. So, this sum can add with the values ranging from 0 to 9 because A can range from 0 to 9 because after 9 when the value of A will get incremented by 1, when the value of A will get incremented by 1, so it will become 10. So, 10 less than 10 the condition will become false. So, it will come out from the loop for loop and this line will get printed. So, let us go for the execution for the better clarity. You can find that the value of a is ranging from 0 to 9 and these values are getting added with the sum and at the end after getting out from the loop, we are printing that the value of sum is 45. 
that means when the value of a will be equal to 10 then it is coming out from the loop so that's why if we print the value of a outside here if you print the value of a outside of this loop I am expecting that it will print the value a as 10 here so let us go for the execution one error is there so I'm just going for this printing is a loop control variable so that's why it is not having the scope outside so it is better to go for here INTA okay so I'm defining this a if we write this INTA here this, that means this scope will be confined within this for loop only so not accessible from the outside but if I define this variable a outside of this loop then obviously it is accessible after the for loop also so now let me go for the execution you can find that a is equal to 10 you are finding the value of a is becoming 10 so 10 less than 10 the condition is becoming false so that's why it is coming out from the loop now see instead of having this we are not erasing the semicolon instead of having this also you can write directly here okay so now let me go for the execution you can find you are going to have the same output instead of write, writing this a plus plus instead of writing this a plus plus here I can also put this a plus plus here I can also put this a plus plus here you can find that we are having the same output whatever you are getting but don't omit the semicolon so semicolons should be there but you can have this initialization statement and this increment or decrement statement in other part if I write a plus plus here so let me go for another experiment if I write a plus plus so you see for each and every iteration a is getting incremented by one here and then one here so a is getting incremented by two for each and every iteration so if I go for the execution you can find that the value of a will get incremented by two always so after coming out from 8 it is becoming 10 so when it is becoming 10 it is coming out from the loop and now we are getting this 10 as the final value for a after coming out from the loop so 0 plus 2 is 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 8 so I'm getting here 20 as a sum so I think now the conception is getting clear to you that how to use the oof, uh, for loop in our um, Java code and whenever we require some iteration we require some looping if we require some repetitive work we can use for we can use do while or you can use while do thanks for watching this video